Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. In this episode, we're going to take a look at our September Military Microwave Supplement, which goes out with the normal issue. Right. The lead story is very interesting, written by Mercury Systems about an agile IF architecture, and it enables flexible electronic warfare and electronic intelligence systems. Normally, these broadband systems are limited by the bandwidth and by the resolution, but having an agile IF allows them to meet different scenarios, thus reducing the cost for systems. So a very interesting approach. Definitely. Uh, what did we have for technical features? Well, we have a full issue, four other uh, features this month. We start with uh, what you might call a case study from Nano Dimension. They talk about trying 3D printing for an an antenna and an amplifier board. This is a collaborative effort they did with Harris to try to demonstrate that 3D printing can meet the requirements of aerospace and particularly space applications. And so they did kind of an A-B comparison of uh, these boards with conventionally manufactured boards. So it's an interesting It's amazing article. technology. It really is. And then we have an application note from Fairview Microwave looking at phase-locked oscillators for various synthesizer applications. That's a good overview. We have a couple of special reports. Quarter Wave reminds us that uh, TWT amplifiers are still preferred if you're talking about really high power amplifiers or space applications. So uh, TWTs aren't dead yet. And then uh, finally, kind of rounding out the uh, issue, we have sort of a primer on some of the export regulations that uh, people who are doing work in aerospace and defense need to keep top of mind. So a, a good overall issue. It's always good to have an update on ITAR regulations because they do tend to change. Right, definitely. So for product features, we had a DC to 67 gigahertz distributed amplifier with very flat gain from Custom Mimic. I'm very impressed with these. I mean, DC to almost 70 gigahertz yeah. is very impressive brand exactly. bandwidth. We also had a very low phase noise multi-channel source that has phase coherent switching from Anapico. So Anapico, mm -hmm. very good experts in analyzer and sources at those uh, low phase noise type of applications. Definitely. What do we have for tech briefs? Well, tech briefs we have from Signal Hound, a uh, low cost, six gigahertz uh, vector signal analyzer. They do a lot of nice products. This is another one in their portfolio. Skyworks has come out with a family of amplifiers for high rel type applications. This is a little bit different for them in terms of their emphasis. And then from a company in phase technologies, they have a new core test system, which has pre-configured hardware, runs on LabVIEW. So it's intended to really streamline the development process for automatic test equipment. So uh, turning to the news, a couple big announcements from Qualcomm. They're really looking to dominate the 5G market. Uh, they announced they're sampling 5G millimeter wave modules for fixed wireless access customer premise equipment. So to me, this is a new field for them. They've always been concentrated on the handset, which they now do antenna to bits. And right. so it looks like they're going after some of the infrastructure market. Exactly. I wouldn't be surprised to see them come out with higher power modules and even address more of that infrastructure market, especially at the millimeter wave where they have these really nice modules. And they also announced that they have completed the acquisition of all the joint venture that they had with TDK for filter production. So they now control their own source of soft filters, which are very key for the uh, handset market. And we talk about 5G a lot, but you know, Wi-Fi is where people spend most of their time, even on their handsets, are right. usually on Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi 6 standard is now released, and the Wi-Fi Alliance contested this new standard. And this is Wi-Fi on steroids. I mean, we're talking some serious bandwidth and right. capacity. It features things like 160 megahertz channels, 1024 qualm, beamforming, and multi-user MIMO. It makes the performance of Wi-Fi 6 much greater than the previous version, so very interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it in the sense that uh, when you have a congested area with a lot of people trying to access the network, it should improve the uh, accessibility. Yes, definitely. So related to this whole discussion of bandwidth, the FCC has uh, allowed now the initial commercial deployment of users in the CBRS band, right. the Cit Citizens Broadband Radio Service, as it's called, and they've allocated five sort of spectrum administrators. These are folks that can allocate the uh, frequency spectrum to a user for use. They kind of monitor to make sure there's no interference. This is the uh, shared part of the band where the U.S. military for the three and a half gigahertz radar applications has the priority. So if there is any kind of interference, it goes to the U.S. military. But in other areas, particularly away from the coast, that spectrum is available. So they've now started to uh, deploy it. Companies like AT&T, Verizon, Charter, and a number of sort of regional wireless internet service providers are the initial users. So we'll see over the next month or two how this deploys. 
And then also we're expecting in June the other part of that band, the FCC is going to auction for, in, a, in effect, 5G use. Uh, and we expect to see a lot of uh, interest in that. So this is in the U.S really the first deployment above 3 gigahertz in that sub-6 sub six gigahertz band for 5G. So it's uh, Yeah, that's a big thing. Um, that mid-band is very important. And globally, people have you know, adopted the 3.5 gigahertz. So it's now good that the U.S. has uh, also done that. Right. And there are some, uh, that spectrum is shared in some other regions. So it's surprising the number of uh, cell phones that already cover that band, including the new Apple iPhone. So uh, people, if they have a phone, they may very well likely be able to tap into that. So uh, turning to events, uh, we held our first ever RF and microwave online event for the industry, right. EDICon Online. Uh, very successful. We had more than 1,500 individual registrants before the event even started. Mm. And they comprised over 13,000 individual session registrations. So wow. good turnout. Uh, some of the sessions had five, 600 people uh, register. So now comes the good part. It's on demand. Right. So all these sessions are available at any time for the next six months, and they're free to our users who uh, watch at any time, thanks to our sponsors. They're also available for continuing education credits with the IEEE, so a lot that you can get out of these uh, on-demand viewings. Yeah, I thought uh, at least the ones that I moderated uh, were very interesting and uh, had, had good turnout generally. So the next show, as you well know, we're getting ready for European Microwave, and we hope a number of our viewers will see us there. We'll get to uh, chat and catch up. Um, as you've noted, our online show daily website is available, so you can keep up to date on any late breaking news and releases that uh, companies have about new products. We're also involved, as we have been, in the Defense Security and Space Forum. That happens on Wednesday, and we again have Strategy Analytics doing the lunch and learn. This year it'll be Eric Hyam, we know, who will cover that. It's a good market overview of the aerospace and defense market. And then we have an interesting industry event, sort of the early afternoon, with four companies talking about new radio architectures for satellite communications. So National Instruments, OMIC, Corvo, and uh, Rodian Schwartz are all going to present. So that ought to be a very informative day. So we are uh, taking reservations, if I can say that, for meetings, Pat and myself. We are also uh, have some, uh, we'll have a video crew there, and so if you're interested in having a video demonstration or video interview, let us know or talk to your account manager. And we hope to see many of you there. So I think that's a wrap for it this is. one. So we want to thank you for watching. We also want to thank our longtime sponsor, Maycom, for making this program possible. Remember, Maycom is your partner from RF to light. Until next time.